On today's episode of the show, I'm going to take a look at how defenses fit the run game against kind of the three core types of concepts you're going to see. Uh, your zone scheme, and we'll go into, you know, not too much detail in the different types of zone, but general zone run fit principles. Uh, fairly straightforward. And then look at what I think can really help, whether it's players or coaches, uh, understanding when the offense moves gaps, pulls a player, uh, maybe two players. So we're going to look at power and counter and how your run fits out of a base 40 front have to change out of those two looks. So the first clip on here is just a straightforward inside zone. Um, you'll see there's a fullback or a tight end out on the backside. Okay, and you have your basic 40 over, 40 strong front here. So as we play it through, kind of the key characteristic of zone, right, that you're going to see is no gaps are moving. Okay, so we're starting in zone, okay, with in this case seven gaps with the additional tight end. Okay, and none of those gaps are going from one side of the center to the other. Okay, so whether it's inside zone or outside zone, that'll stay true. Obviously, the angles are a little bit different. Here, the zone's working at the boundary. Okay, so you'll see the first double working to that B gap linebacker with the first linebacker to play side. In this case, he's the B gap linebacker. Here, it's working to the, the second linebacker in the box from the play side. All right, and then one of the principles you'll see on outside zone is teams always have to decide how they want to handle this backside defensive end. So in this case, they're going to block them, okay, uh, with that fullback and now try and have the free hitter be the D-gap player. Okay, that guy would also be responsible for the quarterback on the pull. So you'll see here, obviously from a D-line standpoint, okay, we got to be able to anchor into our gaps. All right, so you'll see here a nice job by the, the boundary side defensive end. Okay, he's not penetrating too far up the field. If you penetrate too far up the field, all right, you're going to create a lane where the running back can get into your gap and then out, okay, uh, and, and cause some trouble by working through your, your buddy's gap and eventually into yours because you're up the field, all right, you're not able to, to close that space. So here you see the end does a great job defending the C-gap, score shoulders. You'll see the two D tackles, they're handling the doubles, and you'll see the linebackers play straight downhill, all right, or straight to their gap, I should say, because it's inside zone, their gap stays where it is. Okay, maybe some subtle movement uh, to the left in this case, but they're able to fill straight downhill. So you'll see how when the linebackers shoot it, it peels what we call peels the double. Now, one doesn't do a very good job. Okay, one's sitting at depth, kind of peeking, looking for the ball. That allows this double team to stay active, and you see the wash it gets on the defense alignment. Okay, here you see 10, he fits it right away, hits this thing downhill, and you see now they can't afford to stay on the defensive lineman. They do, in this case, creates a free hitter for the linebacker right at the point of attack. But even if, if 69 tried to work off here, that's going to free up now this D-tackle to make the play. The double team's not sticking on him. Now, some teams will play this differently if your linebacker is going to be inside and you want your end outside the tight end, then your end will be the quarterback player, okay? And then this guy will have to fill that C gap. Most teams, and the way I prefer to play, is play the end inside, okay? Now, he can't get reached by this tight end. He's got to be able to work off the hip of this double. So here, really, 96 gets reached. We don't want to get reached. If this guy doesn't do such a good job, this is going to find a crease right in here, all right, because we want it with two guys in one gap. But you see 10 shoot it. Okay, and it forces it back. Ideally, what we want to do with zone is we want to kick that back out of those front side gaps. So there are gaps sound here. And you see if this end dives inside, now that ball's got to wind all the way back to the free hitter who can play the quarterback and then fall back in, make the tackle like he does there. So what about when gaps move? Okay, this is kind of a second clip. This is kind of an inter intermediary between uh, between zone uh, and a power counter concept. Here they're going to move the fullback. Now don't worry about 82. Okay, 82 is going to get accounted for by the secondary between 22 and 6. All right, so here what we're looking at is we've got a fullback initially aligned on the front side. So our linebackers are aligned 
Okay, to defend the newly created D gap, front side A and back side B in the 40 strong front. Okay, here we're going to see that fullback now cross the set to block this backside defensive end. Okay, so now we have a moving gap. We no longer have a front side D gap. We now have a backside D gap. How are we going to handle that post snap? Okay, so as this fullback crosses the set, right, you're going to now see these linebackers do what we call string it or bump, all right, where now 21 is going to become the D gap player. 45 is now going to fit where, the, where 21 used to be. And 2 is now going to fit where 45 used to be. Okay, now again, you can have some preference as to whether you'd like your end to true shoulder this, where he's going to stay outside and now uh, 21 can be the, the C gap player. I would prefer, and I think it's what they want to do here, is if he can get down inside, just like we had in the last one, not get reached, get inside of it. He's now that D gap contain player, weak side B, strong side A. Again, you see the double team not able to climb to the second level. Good movement by the defense, adjusting the gaps. Now we have, now we have a defender for each gap again. Okay, forcing that ball back to the free hitter. In this case, he doesn't even have an opportunity to get back to the free hitter. 92 does a great job not getting reached. Okay, playing through that A gap. And 2 is able to make the tackle. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at those two options. We're talking defending zone in this case. All right, so let's look at those two options here again, just out of a base 40. Okay, that first picture we saw, we saw the give on this side. The fullback stayed. He's going to try and secure the C gap. Okay, this defensive end can't get reached. Right, as this tackle steps down, he's bringing the C gap with him. We got to try and run through where his feet were. We cannot get reached by that fullback. Okay, this is now your D gap or quarterback player. And then the key is for these backers to fit it right now downhill. Okay, we got no gap movement. The gaps are post snap as they were pre snap. Okay, and that is going to force the ball. Again, hopefully the running back has to make, you know, a significant cut, and now it's forcing the ball back to that unblocked free hitter who can fold back in like we saw in that first clip. Now, second clip, we saw a little bit of movement. Again, still a zone scheme. So we don't have an O-lineman pulling. Um, but we are moving the fullback. So similar set. We saw Laval lined up in that 40 strong look again. Now this fullback is going to cross the set and take his D gap from this side. Okay, now there's as he leaves, there's no D gap there and he's going to create a D gap here. So we saw in that clip again the D line. Is going to fit its gaps. This quick now, again, I would say I want that guy to stay tied to the C gap. So as he steps down to be involved in this double team, we got to get inside of that crosser. Uh, and then the backers are going to do what we call string. So they see that movement from the fullback. The will is now going to account for that created D gap. All right, the mic is going to slide over and account for what was the will's gap in the B. And now the Sam, who's got no D gap, to his side, he can now shuffle in and fit the A, and we saw him make the tackle in that situation. So now how does that change when we get to power and counter? So one puller front side or two pullers front side. And I think this is something as a, as a player, you know, I coach uh, summer league football, and we get kids coming up from JV, and usually in JV, okay, you're, you're as a linebacker, an inside linebacker, you're finding the football. Right, you got the A gap, and then you're going to go through your gap or from your gap to the football. You got to understand that when teams start operating at a higher level, being able to read the offensive line is critical, and being able to account for changing gaps is, is one of the most important things in remaining sound as a defensive player, as a defensive coach. So, here you're going to see Ohio State run a power scheme. Okay, there's a number of different ways you can do this, but the fullback is going to be front side along with one puller. So you'll see here the fullback is going to account for that defensive end in the C gap. We're going to get a double team back to the mic. 
The center is going to block back. The tackle is usually going to protect the B gap and then expand back. And this guard is going to pull and try and kick out that Sam linebacker or the outside linebacker to the side of the call. Hopefully then what that will create is space for the running back to come off this double team. To come off this double team and vertical off the puller's kick out. So we'll see here the down blocks create that dent in the defense, right? This end's getting blocked pretty good by that tight end. We see 52 pull around. Okay, and we see here how if the mic were to ignore the puller and bury into his A gap, we see that natural seam that could be created by 52 now kicking out this outside linebacker. If we watch the mic here, he does a great job in realizing, okay, a gap has been pulled from the boundary side. I no longer need to fill the A gap as I would on zone. I need to work over the top and account for that gap as it arrives on the front side of this run play. So let's see here now. Now we have a fitter inside the puller, a fitter outside the puller, and we're able to get this thing on the ground. Again, as gas moves, you got to adjust on defense. Now, also here, he's going to run out of the A gap, right, and defend that C gap, really, as they or D gap, as they now create an E gap with a puller, right? If you imagine, you know, 52 here, he's going to finish right here, right? We're going to now have an extra gap that we got to account for. Kind of two ways on the backside you can handle it. You can have your will, okay, shuffle over the top and become the new A-gap player, all right, to kind of play the power if it cuts back or goes really vertical. Some teams, you can have your nose chase the puller or work over the top into that A-gap, and that allows your, your linebacker to stay dialed into the B. The other thing you can do, which, which you see here, is if you get this down block, really teach this end to chase it, and that will ultimately – take away that a gap from the back side of it so you're not you're not getting to the a gap from the side of the puller this guy's really playing through the c to the a knowing that just like we see here that's going to force the back to stop his feet and come lateral and then the mic and the sam or the mic and the will if it's into the boundary can fit it that way okay now looking at counter same idea, okay, but now we're dealing with a little bit of different sets. So, again, usually counter is going to work off your power look. Here, Ohio State's actually on defense. Okay, we're looking at Wisconsin running this counter. So, here are the fullbacks on the front side. They're trying to make it look like they're going to run power to the right. They're actually going to run counter to the left. Traditional GT or, or counter tray. We're going to get the hard down block down to backer number two. All right, we're going to leave. Two players front side. One will be for the first puller. One will be for the second puller. Okay. And ultimately, we're going to try and either block back here. Double should create that down block wall. Okay. And then we're going to get two pullers coming to the front side. Trying to kick out and pull through. There's the two pullers. Again, you have 84 squeezing that C gap, trying to cut that off. I love being able to tell this defensive end, hey, if you see puller or down block, you chase that thing. Okay, and then this will become our quarterback player. So that you see here, he's playing the quarterback. Again, this end gets reached. I don't love it. But what I want you to see is the front side. Now, I get that, you know, this guy went number two in the draft. Um, and the, the Will linebacker here was drafted as well. Okay, but watch this defensive end. He is going to stay tight to that C-gap, and now he's going to rip underneath that first puller. Okay, that's going to force the ball again wider, force the back to stop his feet. Okay, go lateral, and now watch the two linebackers come over the top. So we're going to cancel the C-gap. Now with two pullers, right, we're going to get an E-gap, and a D gap, and we've got to get both linebackers over the top to fit it. Here they do. All right, they're able to make that play. 
So we rip into the C gap. That's going to force this second puller to be a dancing bear. Okay, he's going to now try and kick out. And now that's where that second inside linebacker, in this case the Mike, has to be able to get over top of the double team. This is where the, the, the counter and power is really defended by that backer who's having to replace a gap, being able to get over the double team and then down. If they step up, right, they're going to get picked off by 71. Over the top, down, makes the play. One of the best running teams in the country. Down south, two, three yards on counter. So quick look, I think, you know, that that idea, the main idea I want people to get here is that when you see pullers, right, we need to replace those gaps. So power again, working towards the fullback in this case. If we have one puller or we're adding one gap, Okay, so here of our seven gaps, we're good. We're gap sound, right? If this was zone, we'd be fine. We could hit it straight. Okay, we're going to get a down block. Trying to work here. Squeeze and expand. And ultimately, this puller is going to try and kick the Sam. So we get one out of gap. He can still fit the outside. Okay, this end's got to get down inside. Again, I like teaching him, hey, chase that thing down. Force this back to bend it. And now our mic... He sees that puller, right? He's got to go over the top and now replace that uh, that C gap. Again, if you want to have the nose work over, try and chase the puller, uh, or have the wheel shuffle over the top um, to play that that newly created A gap as the mic vacates. That's up to you. Um, but that that's certainly I think a key in defending this type of run plays that might get over the top. And then lastly, if we want to look at counter, again, usually going, looks like it's coming out of the same set, usually going away from the fullback. So now that counter is going to go away from the fullback. We're going to see a similar double team. Now it's working two backers in. Okay, here we're going to get the pull from the center because we have a three tech. Okay, and we need that quick or that defensive end to the side of the call. Chase that thing down, spill it. Okay, force this tackle to go the long way around. Okay, and now when we see that as the two backers, we've got two pullers. We need to get two guys over the top. The will to set the edge, the mic to fill it. And ultimately that puts you in a position where, again, I don't want to get reached here. Okay, I want to pinch this down, make sure that there's no cutback. Okay, and then here's my quarterback play. All right, so ultimately, whether you're fitting zone, power, or counter, it's all about being able to adjust to the gaps that you see. And when the offense moves gaps, you got to be a little more specific in your coaching than just find the football. Okay, you got to prescribe the gaps you want those guys to hit, if those gaps move. You know, and that can make you a really, really sound defensive group.